Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so it's super late. My table is a mess, as always. But I have been busy crafting. So I made these two following a tutorial from Septeria 18. I will put a link to her video in the description box below. But basically it is an envelope pocket folder. So you have a little pocket here, a little pocket here, and then the envelope there. Um, I haven't decorated it yet. And then you'd have some twine or nice ribbon just popping through the hole and going round to hold that together. Um, this one I did using 6 by 6 paper. And this one I did using 8 by 8 so slightly bigger okay so they haven't actually got one for six by six they've got one. oh yeah they have I completely missed it last time so it's two and five eighths and this might come out a little different then I didn't think they had one, so I made up my own. <laughs> so I'm gonna just around these corners because just preference you don't have to do this in fact I'm going to cut most of them away in a second but it's just <laughs> it is what it is okay so I'm just going to trim off this little bit Bonky, apparently I can't a straight line to save my life. Okay. And I'm just going to put a little dab of wet glue on as well. Just on those little corner bits there. Now, this next bit, um, you're going to cut the top of the thing and the bit that's left is going to be your pocket. So you want to cut it as wide as you want your pocket. So I'm going to cut maybe about this much off. You could use... The guillotine for a straighter line if you have trouble with straight lines like I do. Or you could stubbornly persevere like I do. <laughs> okay, so you've got that bit there. For your next piece of paper, just get any piece of paper, like a just a scrap or whatever. And so I'm gonna measure this. I want it four and a quarter long and three and an eighth. So I need to roll it this way. So four and a quarter. Yep. So you want it the width or the length of your envelope and then you want to leave a little maybe like half inch gap just so you can see the envelope underneath it. So 
what did I say this size was? Uh, three and an eighth. So I'm going to go with two and seven eighths. Yeah, so it leaves a little tiny gap, not that much, but I mean, you could leave a bigger gap if you wanted. Um, okay, so to glue the pocket, get a little bit of glue, obviously, and you want to go just at the side there, and at the side there, and just above that crease line. And I'm just going to quickly round these corners as well. Okay. And before the glue dries, double check that you can close it. And then it's positioned right. Ooh. And I'm just going to put a couple of pegs on. For a second. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to cut mine at four. round off the edges again this is just preference I just quite like the corners rounded okay and then you want to you just want to score the extra bit was well this is what happens you see as soon as you turn the camera on <laughs> This went perfectly when I did it earlier. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just gonna Just the edges again and along that crease. And then you're going to pop it into place. Make 
sure it can still fall over. And so you just want to basically. So I. So you just want to score it at the halfway mark. So my piece is one and three eighths. So and I'm going to trim that bit off. And obviously doing the corners and then you can trim off any access if you got your guides wrong like I did <laughs> and then you just want to get your hole maker, whatever it's called, crocodile punch, normal punch, and right at the very top, as far up as you can manage without it breaking, you want to punch the hole. And And then we are going to just along the edge. And we're going to glue it on to this top one, like so. And that is where you're going to put like your thread or whatever, what have you. Okay, there we have it. Our little flip envelope. I got given some wonderful gifts at, from Craft Happy Mailer, Happy Mail Club. Uh, I got sent some really, really pretty gifts, so I want to use some of those, I think. Enjoy the little things. Oh, that's gorgeous. Window. For my friend. Little teapot. Let's have a look. See, so I want this to be kind of like decorated nicely. I'm not very good at this though. No. <laughs> so I feel very out of my depth, but I'd very much like to learn because it's so beautiful. It, it can be absolutely stunning when the person knows what they're doing. Which is not me. But like I say, I, d I would de I definitely want to grow and experiment and learn more about how to do these sorts of things, I think. And I think with stuff like this, it is just experimenting and learning your style sort of thing learning what what is right for you what you enjoy about it um, which is probably why I'm not particularly good at it that's not gonna work it's too small um, because I don't know because it's 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 only because I've it's not something I'm used to. I only really painted and, and drew 
the crafting side of things is something that I've found since becoming ill and just because I want other things to kind of entertain me as it were like keep me might work. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Double off there. Leave that to dry. See if I can manage this one as well, or if it's too short. See, I think my issue has always been with stuff like that, this, is that I have always been a little bit scared of failure, as a lot of people are. Um, and... I know I can kind of get by in art. It's not too bad. But because this is the unknown, I could fail miserably. It could look awful. And I suppose since getting ill, I don't really care about that. It's like, well, if I've enjoyed the process, if it's been fun to make, then it doesn't matter if it looks good or not, really. It's just another lesson learned. Oh, okay. Well, you can't do it that way. It's not going to work if the paper's too thin, or it's not going to work at all. Or, you know, it's just a a process of how things are going to work, whether they're going to work, and it doesn't matter if they don't, you just won't do it again, you know, it will look good like that, and then maybe with the, so it brings that colour in a bit more. Hello up there. Oh, and throw it across the room. <laughs> I'm gonna put this pretty bluey green flowery swirl. Goodness, I remember making these sorts of things. Not with paper, just drawn ones. Remember you get the pen and you go round and then it comes out like swirly, cute pattern. That's that. Okay. How's that gonna look? A bit big. Okay, not to worry. How about this one? Oh, the small one works better. Bigger one is too big. Okay, good to know. Okay. 
Okay. My first attempt at an embellishment that hasn't been like shop bought, that has been pieced together. I don't think that's too bad. I think that looks quite pretty. I quite like it. I mean, sure, there are other people that make absolutely glorious embellishments that look fabulous, but they've had years of practice and this is my first one. So, I've got to cut myself some slack and realise that I'm going to improve if I carry on. And that's why I say it doesn't look too bad. I mean, if I was judging myself as a... <laughs> With my normal eye, I would be saying that it's awful and I need to start again. But, like I say, it's a learning process. And the good thing is, is that the people that I send these to go through that learning process with me. Because the things that I send them will hopefully get better and better. And they can say, oh, I'm... I remember when she sent loads of rubbish. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I still enjoy painting. But I must admit, it's a nice, a nice change of pace. It's a little bit more relaxed. A little easy, 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 easy little... I'm just going to cut that little bit that I've got, a bit of scrap paper that I've got there. And I'm going to cut the corners. And then I'm just going to two and a quarter. And at five. Okay. And I want the. I haven't actually got like one of those punches. So what I did last time was I just. I mean, it doesn't look as good because you can see the fold and everything. But it still looks quite pretty, I think. So, just okay. This will do. Pearl. Pearly pearl sort of vellum. until the last score line and then just nip it off with that little angle. Angle. Although it does mean that I've got to redo the little little tabs and that just means that your envelope's not quite as flat so it can fit a little tiny bit more in but before we glue that down I want to cut the vellum piece out We'll give it a little bit of glue. And 
There is. It's kind of see through. Not as much as completely clear vellum, but that's what I found first. So, right, and then I am going to glue the tabs. them up like that and then putting that through And there we go. Cute little autumn decorating Halloween, spring, whatever you like. Now I'm not going to make the bigger one of these because it's the exact same process, just with a bigger envelope. Mm. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope that I made it easy enough to follow. I didn't make it too complicated. I do have a tendency to do that, make things complicated. <sighs> if you want to flash me that thumb, flash me that thumb. <laughs> um, and comment down below any tips that you have. Um, with any of it, really. Tips and, and advice are always, always welcome. Um, and, uh, what is your favourite autumn paper brand that, that has been bought out? I would love to know. Um, I have got my eye on a lot of Rosie's Studio paper at the moment and they're in uh, the embellishments I think they're fantastic they're really really beautiful I also really love um, Frank Garcia paper but it's gonna cost me such an, it's gonna cost me an arm and a leg to get it over here because I can't find a shop in the UK that sells it it's all um, all America based um, yeah, if you if you know of a UK shop that does it, fantastic. Point me in that direction. Um, so yeah, well, I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Love you. Bye.